We don't do that here. But the queen. Goodness gracious. This weekend is Jover. <laughs> I wanted to mix that one in kind of lightly. Uh, but we're here. It's July 21st. And the ultimate fucking casuals have convened. Nathan, my man, how are you? How are you doing? Doing well. Just trying to cope with uh, the current craziness of the news cycle. I normally never watch the news because I just am convinced it's bad for my health, but it's been hard to look away this last week. As a person who kind of has to keep up with all that stuff, it is very bad to your, for your health. I can, I can confirm that. I think last Saturday, I when that broke, I came home. I was at this uh, little weekend seminar thing for no shit, nonviolent messaging and de-escalation in messaging, that kind of stuff. Oh my gosh. And, like, and then that, someone takes a shot at a former president. Good Lord. I uh, had a little bit of a, an anxiety attack when I got home. Yeah. Uh, when I heard the news, I was at like a like a church gathering uh, just for a send off for one of our friends. And that happened when we were all there. And I was like, I think most people there were pretty rattled. It was like a, like no one really knew what to think kind of thing. Yeah. It's really scary. Like how, how does this happen here? Like I, I sent you guys the little press event that I did the following Friday, just a few days ago. And that's, I don't, the tenor on social media, I know that's not an accurate representation of broader public sentiment, but it's been a lot of people saying, like, a lot of calls for civil war. It's fucking ridiculous. So that was the point of my whole speech was like this. You don't understand how bad this can really get. I have seen this firsthand. Don't we need to stop mm -hmm. talking like this? Yeah, absolutely. Goodness gracious, I don't care for the for Trump a whole lot, but God damn it, I don't want anyone murdered for it. Yeah, and and almost I, I won't say it was this is the my worst aspect, but definitely a really terrible aspect of it was just how bad the Secret Service was oh, that day. Oh my lord, like, how? <laughs> like you know, you, you want to think that the government is like. They've got things under control. They're doing these to the best of their ability. They have the best people on the job for that job. And that's like, this is just another example of like, there's just some really incompetent people running our government. Yep. That, you know, and that's just a microcosm of that. And it's it's, it's a little black pilling yeah. to think about. Uh, if those Secret Service agents, that should, that, this is like, start polishing your resume because you're not here anymore. You you legitimately have one job, and you didn't do it. Did you notice that none of those people were at the RNC like two days later when <laughs> Trump showed up? I didn't see that. Um, he, I he, he had a new detail. Makes perfect sense, as you should. Uh, man, the what really tripped me up about it was people pointed out to law enforcement and Secret Service, like, hey, there's a dude crawling on that roof over there. Do you see that? And eh, it's nothing to worry about. Are you fucking high? <laughs> what are you thinking? And then the one cop just went up there just to humor them, basically, and then saw someone pointing a rifle at him and threw himself off the ladder from the sounds of it. Yeah. And, and apparently, I don't know how true this is, but the rumor mill is that there were not, there weren't comms between local law enforcement and secret service so for them relaying the message was delayed enough for that whole event to take place yeah yeah i heard that as well unbelievable but on that fucking cheerful note ultimate fucking casuals i'm super fucking casual you're gonna find out just how casual i am as we get into the week or later in the in the releases You'll see just how deep in the fucking weeds we're about to get. Because we're looking for it, man. We just came... Are we still in the trenches? Does UFC 304 count as still? Um, It is the the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. There's some good Up stuff Up until on the it. main event. And 
Yeah, up until the main event, and then we're back kind of down on the trench. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, and if I guess if you live in the UK, you're going to stay in the trenches because this isn't happening until like you know five, in three the in the morning. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, that's that is uh, uh seriously uh, like under Australia. I understand how those events kind of get in weird times for them, for it to be like midday for us, right? But that, that this is un, not that big of a time difference and you still couldn't make it a better time for the your target audience which is the UK ridiculousness yeah kind of shameful kind of shameful oh wow speaking of shameful john jones charged with two misdemeanors assault and interference of interference with communication this was the he had his ped testing and he was not very nice to the person doing the testing. Uh, was accosted, thrown out of John Jones's home, and I think the interference with comms is that that testing agent was maybe trying to call, and then he took their phone or something like that. Just speculating. I didn't mm-hmm. really look into it, but that's what it sounds like. Yeah, and he is he has admitted that he took their phone. Now his oh, okay. reasoning is, oh, oh, he. I thought it was my phone, and so that's why I took it. But he's admitted that he <laughs> he took their property and kept it from them, uh, which is, you know, pro- his lawyers are probably happy with him for saying that publicly. <laughs> but I absolutely did the thing you're charging me with. It's great. That doesn't make it. I thought it was my phone. No, that doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. How does he keep getting into this type of stuff? Is he roid raging? Is that what's happening? Either that or he's on another like drug bender and someone showed up at the wrong time. Um, I know there was some speculation that he was drunk and on the little driveway camera he had, he looked impaired. Um, I also heard someone saying that he was doing like lines of cocaine when this person knocked on his door. And I think when these people show up, if you, like, refuse to give a test, there's, like, certain penalties that come with that. Because it, it's supposed to be random, random drug testing. Is this USADA, VADA? Who, are, who, is, who does U, uh, UFC test with? Um, well, this incident happened, I think, when USADA was still around. Because this happened last year, right? And we're just now getting the... Or did it happen, like, this spring? It, it happened earlier this year, yeah. Okay, so it must be under the new organization that um, the UFC is using. The one that the Their NFL internal uses, testing. Right? Yeah, remember we were t- we Isn't talked about like, that. that. It's we... like realcleansports.com or something <laughs> It like was that. something kind of like goofballish like that, yes. And uh, NBA, NFL use this, so it's like, yeah, you're. this is a non-testing organization, basically. A drug-free sport international. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, man, with, I don't know, VADA, whatever, you know, the faults might be with people being able to slip past, like their testing regimen does seem to be pretty solid. Like you have to take one mandatory six months before your event, and then it's randomized testing throughout that six months up until... You test, you test before and after the fight. And any other time, you're randomized testing as well. Through When you're like non, non-competition non time, you still have to test mm-hmm. a few times a year. Man, John Jones. Uh, we were, before we started recording, we were talking about that one, the video that I sent you. It's the, the dude that tried to asterisk everything on John Jones's record. Yeah, yeah. So it it was a essentially a video where like, you know, it was well he lost to Reyes, he lost to Tiago Santos, he lost to the first Gustafson fight, and he's been DQ'd once, should have been DQ'd twice, and it's kind of just rattling off all of the close calls that John has had. And you know, I'm not a John Jones apologist. He's definitely deserving of criticism in a lot of ways, but that video is definitely kind of like everything close that john had he deserved to lose it it shades of like kind of the mayweather criticisms like everyone was certain he lost to oh who was that guy that champion he beat way back in the day when he was still 
Pretty Boy Floyd. Castillo? Yeah. Yeah, people will be like, oh, well, he really lost the Castillo fight, and so therefore he's not, not the GOAT kind of thing. You know, just kind of just oh, yeah. nitpicking the results and ignoring the actual good stuff that he did. And the absolute decimation in the in the rematches. Any rematch that Floyd right. has ever gave. He, maybe it was a close fight the first time, but definitely not the second time. Oh, yeah, and, and the same thing for uh, John Jones. Like, the Gustafson fight was really really close and then he beat the shit out of him in the second fight yeah of course that's what fucking champions do <laughs> even even if you're a piece of shit outside the ring it yeah. doesn't change the fact that inside the ring he's pretty damn good yep well anything more on john jones before I, I don't think this is the same rule change but on his uh dq the rule change with the hands down knee down Hands, hands being on the ground does not equal a downed opponent anymore. I think this is going into effect Q4 of this year, October 1st, but I need to check. Yeah, this this wouldn't have applied to the uh, Anthony Smith fight. I think he was like on his butt or something when he got kneed or like halfway kind of in a crouch position. Yeah. This, uh, I, when they, uh, we're talking about this on the broadcast for the uh, July 20th fight night. It was, it seemed like everybody was in agreement that this was going to improve things. Cause, like, if you have somebody, if you're kind of like hunched over, putting your hands down, now your opponent can't really do a whole lot to you, but you're not really down. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, it's a stalling tactic, is yeah. what it is. And it, it brings us closer to being able to just straight up soccer kick someone on the ground, which <laughs> I think I think would would be a, a welcome rule change, a be, if only for the fact that it, it takes away like the part of the USC we don't like or MMA in general, where people will just you know lazily shoot for a double leg and then they'll just lay and pray. You know, you have to actually wrestle intelligently. If there's a risk that your opponent might kick you right in the face or, or throw a knee at your forehead, you can't just stick your head down and expect not to get hit. So, yeah, definitely. The, there was always like those arguments about weight bearing with your hands being down. And if it's not a weight bearing hand, then it doesn't count. Or that's just fucking ridiculous. Having yeah, it mints it. And the difference between commissions were like some commissions are two hands down, some are one hand down. It's just like, it makes it confusing. I think, I, if I recall correctly, this is the association of state commissions that are, they're all universally making this change. So this is going to be a big improvement across the board. Uh, uh, uh. Reviews. This one's pretty light on MMA. So a little bit of boxing talk. July 13th. Jaron Ennis, 147, uh, one of the champions at 147 pounds. He gets the stoppage between rounds five and six. They got the Nomas in the corner. David Avanesian came in on relatively short notice. I think he had like a month of prep time. So it's not terrible. Not great. But Jaron Ennis, a lot of people were criticizing in Discord, were saying that he's getting hit way too much and Avanesian should have been taken out earlier your thoughts i think that's i i, I don't agree with that um i don't either avanesian stuck around for six rounds with terence crawford yep and he landed a couple punches so you know i think people are ready to crown ennis and so when he's not blowing people out of the water it's a problem but i mean he very clearly is the king of at 147 right now even if he only has one belt for sure. And with uh, Spence and Crawford, even with Spence losing to Crawford, he was still one of the top top two of the division, and they're both moving up. So there's not a whole lot going on here. Mario Barrios is one of the champions. Who's Yeah, and then... Um, he's all right, but... I mean, Virgil Ortiz was the natural like rival he could have had, but he's moved up because of his you oh. know, inability to yeah. cut weight. And then um, I guess that really leaves uh, – who's the uh, – Stanionius. Yep, Stanionius um, is about as good as it gets. Who's good but not elite from, I think, the things we've seen from him so far. Nah, definitely not. 
as fun as he is, he's really entertaining. And uh, with if you take Jaron Ennis out of the picture, he would be at the at the top of a pretty short list. But you know, otherwise we have Connor Ben. Come on, man. Oh, brother. <laughs> uh, Brian Norman, I think, picked up the WBO title when he beat Giovanni Santian, but he's not. He's not on Jaron Ennis's level either. So it's he's gonna be he's big fish little pond like there's not a whole lot going on here. Alexis Rocha, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> what? Here's a weird hypothetical: if Jaron Ennis, like let's say he moved up to 154 in two years, um, could Teofimo Lopez win a belt at 147 with him gone? With what we have here, and who would be who would still be here when he gets here? Uh, I would imagine Stanionis would probably not be long for 147, looking to move up as well. So he could snipe that one off. Uh, Mario Barrios is not a, not great. Uh, does a lot better work out of the ring, apparently. Fuck Mario Barrios. <laughs> uh, Omira Figueroa. God damn. I don't really see... I re- yeah, I reckon he could. And hell, I mean... He probably Ryan Garcia could. could probably come up and win a belt up at 147 too. Yes. I mean, Ryan Garcia versus Connor Ben. Give me Ryan Garcia seven days a week. Uh, Ryan Garcia could probably finally get pick up a belt. Uh, Devin Haney, as pillow handed as as he has been his entire life, he probably could as well. Just there's not a whole lot really stopping them. That's it. Ugh, dark times for the one of the glamour divisions of boxing. Yeah, I've been I had been saying that for a few months uh pretty much this entire year that 147 is about to start getting bleak. Uh once because people are going to start moving out, people moving up not their power has not translated upward with them, so it's it's not going to be as exciting once it does fill out again. You know, I didn't even think of this until now, but if Ennis and Stanionis do move on. There's a very good chance that Gervonta Davis picks up another division belt. Goodness gracious, he actually could do that, couldn't he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he already knocked out Mario Barrios, who's a champion at, now a champion at 147. Yes. And, and yeah, there's not a whole lot standing in his way. There really isn't. Wow. Hmm. Well, Uncle Al, when you want to, when you want to start mapping this out, Come hit us up. We'll be good consultants for this. Uh, yesterday, in in the wee hours of July 20th, over in Japan, there was a card there. One of our B-Sides homies was there. But the one that I wanted to point out was Tenshin Nasukawa. This was his fourth fight. Gets a stoppage in three over Jonathan Rodriguez, who, question mark. But it wasn't really about how... about the quality of the opponent, which objectively was pretty solid for your fourth opponent that's it's really good i think he's like 17 and three or something like that not terrible but nasakawa was fucking awesome have you seen uh i have not oh i may have seen the the highlight reel of this one you see if i can pull it up real quick i did get a the replay of the knockout specifically oh you know what i did see this when it happened yeah yeah, he looks he he looks like a boxer. Yeah, he's really which, f- I mean, formed out really well. Uh, he almost looks and boxes a little like in a way the way he sort of holds his stance. Can you see it? I sure can. Cool. Look at the way he moves his foot, plants his heel right oh. inside the arch of his foot. He kind of drops his guard with a jab. Look at that footwork. Right hand. Look at that footwork. And then same here, he plants his lead He's foot off. right there. It's fucking perfect. Yeah, that's that's pro boxing footwork right okay, there. Like I said, before the fight even started, he's got those angles. Controlling the ring he's got that without advantage. throwing a punch, basically. Yes. He had poor Jonathan, sacrificial lamb. <laughs> he had him right where he wanted every time. He took a, like a round, two rounds to figure, feel him out a bit. And once he got it, once he was dialed in, it was fucking lights out. I'm really excited about him uh, building himself back up into pro boxing after, you know, being embarrassed as like a 17-year-old kid. 
by Floyd Mayweather. Which I'm not sure why that's... I I guess I kind of get why, but at the same time, like, he was 17 years old fighting the top three, not three, greatest boxers of all time. It's, uh... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there absolutely shouldn't be any shame of that. And it, also fighting a guy that, like, outweighs him by 35 pounds. Yep. So, yeah, this was a solid performance by Tension. If you haven't seen it, it is available, uh, you know, if you know the right places to go. Don't want to say them out loud, but I could probably link something somewhere. So, in like three years, this is definitely like a mega fight between him and Inoue at the Tokyo Dome, right? Assuming he keeps winning? Yes, I think so. They're about, yeah, they're at the same weight class right now. While he's only on his fourth fight in boxing, this is he's had I don't know how many fights with like kickboxing, MMA, and I think he did like karate or something else. So he definitely has experience. Yeah, and super bantamweight is not a particularly deep weight class either. So I mean, if he's got the skills and he can knock off a couple higher ranked opponents, yep, I think you could definitely sell that. I think his best move right now, if he does want to land in a way in Tokyo, he w he should probably think about chasing a lot of Inoue's previous opponents. Yeah, so you get the, the side by side of I beat this guy better than you did kind of thing. Yes. And maybe someone that he hasn't fought. Uh, Sam Goodman out of Australia. Uh, MJ Akhmadaliev. Like, those are two pretty solid names that in a way hasn't beaten he would if he did fight them but just hasn't had the opportunity yet so but otherwise Nasukawa keep watching if you're not watching you should July 27th big juggernaut Joe Joyce is back I uh don't know why he keeps doing this to himself Derek Chisora is the opponent I suppose if you want a get back this is perfect a lot of name recognition uh, he's near and dear to the fans' hearts, uh, including mine, which is why I don't want him to do it, because he's going to get hurt, and I don't like it. The old Dellboy's been fighting for a long time now. He has. This is a strange fight. I mean, it's too... I, I keep forgetting how old Joyce is. Like, Joyce is, what, in it, nearing 40, right? Yep. Yeah. And what, what a fall-off he's had since his back-to-back -back losses versus Zong. Like Zong. And his return versus Cash Ali was not great. Uh, it took him 10 out of 10 to get the stoppage. And it just was a, I don't know, lumbering, slow affair, which I know with Joe Joyce, it's not saying a whole lot. It was slower than usual than what you expect out of Joe Joyce. So, yeah, I, I don't know what to make of him anymore. But... That's all I got for the boxing stuff. Do, is there anything maybe you wanted to... Anthony Joshua versus Daniel Dubois is happening later in the year? Yeah, yeah, that's a damn good fight. Now, what I'm not that excited to talk about, but kind of, maybe, a little bit. July 13th, UFC Fight Night at the Ball Arena in Denver. This was Nama Yunus versus Cortez. I checked out... All of the prelim, anything that had a stoppage of some kind, I checked them out. Um, but from the bottom up, Evan Elder, submission in two over Darius Flowers. That was fun. Uh, my my friend, Josh Fremd, drops the ball. UD, Andre Petrosky. RJ Alert, Luana Santos, submits Maria Agapova in the first. This one I wanted to point out especially, Montel Jackson. K.O. fucking... 15 seconds over Demon Blackshear. I, I don't know. I feel like maybe this is hyperbolic and I'm a little intoxicated by the KO as stoppages tend to do. But I, this might be like a dark horse coming up with Talbot. Might be. Montel Jackson was fucking solid. Jasmine... God, I didn't listen to the broadcast very well. Jasmine... Yeah, Zuda, blah, 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 blah. UD over Fatsy McLean. Charles Johnson, KO3 over Joshua Van. For flyweight, this dude is really tall. He's like 5'10". And he cuts his hair very strangely. Shaves all his head except this one patch on the back. Yeah. <laughs> it does, doesn't look very good. Abdul Razak Al-Hassan 
Uh, it was ruled a no contest. Cody Brundage was hit in the back of the head twice on separate occasions, uh, once and uh, once each time. The ref stops it to give uh, Brundage some time. Doc comes in to check him out, and Cody says he can't continue. So it was ruled a no contest. I think he felt some serious heat coming from Alasan, and he didn't want to didn't want to keep going. T took the way out. Yeah, he took an easy way out rather than facing the music. Uh, Julian Arosa submits Christian Rodriguez in the first. This was a fun one. It's short. I recommend checking it out if you can. Uh, Gabriel Bonfim, UD over Angie Lusa. John Silva, Dr. Stoppage in the third over Drew Dober. I'm trying to remember what happened here. Silva knocked him out. It, it was sort of like he caught him with a good punch and he went down and then it was the following ground and pound that, that finished him off, I believe. Well, there you had it. Uh, Muslim Salikov split decision over Santiago Ponsonibio. And Rose Namayunas, UD over Tracy Cortez. I don't really... There's not much to say. Yeah, um, I don't know what else to say about it. The, the only fight I have anything to really say about, which is the main event, I don't have anything good to say about. The Rose fight, I mean, Rose won, and it, she won dominantly, but like it's very clear she doesn't have any power at this weight class, and it still just makes me question, why are you... Why why move up when you have that little of an you know advantage? Like, she's going to... Eventually, like she's ranked six now. She probably will go a little bit higher up the rankings, but I just can't envision her becoming champion of this weight class with that. I mean, she has to box perfectly, which, you know, she bought her, her boxing was beautiful in this fight. It absolutely but, was. You know, if you hit someone flush on the chin 20 times and they don't go down, you know, she did get a knockdown in the first round, but, you know, point still stands. Most of the fight striking, it was more just like their, uh, you know, Cortez was just getting peppered. I'm like, okay, I'm watching a Devin Haney fight now. Cool. <laughs> you know? That's actually a really good comparison. Devin Haney. But yeah, I, everything you said, Rose, her countering was really sharp. It it was great. Her boxing was fantastic, like you said. But, yep, Tracy Cortez was able to take all of it. Even though she got sat down the first time. After that, it didn't happen again. Like, you don't have... You probably just kind of caught her unexpecting, and that's why she went down for, from it. Yeah, I don't see a whole lot going on. Macy Barber is probably going to beat your ass. Aaron Blanchfield also. Uh, Man on Fioro, that one I'm not sure about. I think they've fought before. And Valentina Shevchenko will beat your ass, and Alexa Grasso will beat your ass. Uh, that's It's not looking good for you, that flyweight. Yeah, it's those Grasso and Shevchenko, it wouldn't even be close. They'd both stop Rose. I hate to say it, but they yeah. would. Uh, but there you have it. Uh, check out the the fights that ended quickly. I recommend checking those out, at, if nothing else. Uh, but there's a lot of them, so I don't know. Might as well watch the whole thing. All right. July 27th. We are... This, this is the light at the end of the tunnel, as you put it. Um, UFC 304 at the Co-op Live in Manchester in England. I'm uh, early prelims from the bottom up. Modestas, oh, Bukowskas versus uh, Marcin Prachinio. Prachnio, excuse me. Light heavyweights. Shauna Bannon versus RJ Alert, Ravina Oliveira. Those are straw weights. Sam Patterson versus Kiefer Crosby, Welters. Christian Leroy Duncan versus Gregory Rodriguez, Middles. Oban Elliott versus Preston Parsons, Welters. Uh, not a whole lot doing there. Yeah, pretty light uh, yeah. undercard, and I think really just a lot of locals. Yeah, typically there were a how lot. they load these these yep. prelims. Find someone who's in the host country. Uh, all right, moving up the prelims: Mick Park versus Lucas uh, Bresky. I'm going with Bresky. Uh, those are heavies. Kaulan Lafren versus Ramon Taveras Bantams. Molly McCann versus Bruna Brazil. Fucking love the alliteration. Strawweight. Nathaniel Wood versus Daniel Pineda. Feathers. And that's the prelims. That actually is a pretty good way to end the prelims. Yeah. Uh, Nathaniel Wood's really fun to watch. And starting the pay-per-view portion, 
Uh, 6th rated featherweight Arnold Allen versus 10th Giga Chikadze. Uh, I'm great, great start to the card. Yeah, I'm excited for this one very much. Uh, Muhammad Mokayev, Mokayev, uh, rated 6th at flyweight versus number 8 Manuel Cape. Uh, Aha, let's yeah. go. Yeah, this one should be fun too. Number 15 at lightweight King Green, formerly known as Bobby versus Patty the Batty Pimblet. So this should be a good time. It does does Patty finally get exposed here? Does he finally get his shit kicked in? Or no, I don't think so. Do you think he's just going to lay on Bobby for three rounds? Yes, or, I don't think he's going to want lay on King for three rounds. <laughs> I don't think he's going to want to engage with him cuz Bobby K- King, god damn it. The fighter formerly known as Bobby uh, used his when he has had stand up he still looks decent his chin is not very good anymore but he still has he's still throwing heat and he can hurt, i think he could hurt patty pretty easily if he wanted to try and engage in stand up personally now the interim heavyweight champion tom aspinall versus rated fourth curtis blades uh, is this a chance for him to style um it's well it's could be it's also a chance for him to lose um do you recall the first meeting between these two i don't so aspinall broke his leg in the first 30 seconds so we didn't really get to see how their styles matched up um blades is a live body for sure um he's not just a fat headweight blob he actually has some pretty good striking skills but i think aspinall especially what we've seen of him in the last since his return, he looks like the complete package. He can beat you in many ways. So if I had to pick, I actually would probably pick him by knockout or probably by knockout or ground and pound stoppage in within the first two rounds. But I'm I'm wondering if the history between them will make him a little bit more tentative to start the fight or if he'll just immediately go balls out like he did against Pavlovich. I think that remains to be seen. And Tabora. Right, yeah. Uh, looking at the timeline, so he the first fight with Blades was in 2022, July 23rd. God damn, it's like almost on the button. Aspinall versus Tabora was his comeback a year later. And here we are, another year later, with the rematch. My expectation, just for the sake of storyline building, is he's going to want to finish this quickly for the for the sake of, I got hurt last time, you didn't beat me, that type of thing. Yeah, and I think also just the ridiculousness of Jones not him not fighting Jones in this moment. I think he will want to make a statement. So, however it finishes, he's going to want to make sure it's an exclamation point in his favor. The he should try something like uh, Tim Zhu on the boxing side was doing for a while. Uh, anytime he every single time he won, he because he was trying to get out from his father's shadow. So he every time he'd say what What's my motherfucking name?" and then everyone would scream Tim. At, or Timmy. <laughs> so that was cool. And But then after that, like, oh, you talk through the fight or whatever in the interview, and then wh- wh- what do you want to do next? He'd look right into the camera and be like, Charlo, where are you? I'm coming for you. It would be cool for Aspinall to do something like that with uh, John Jones. Man, that was such a cool little timeline in boxing when Tim was still undefeated and the Charlo fight was still on the table. Yeah. He was supposed I would to fight Virgil. Some more of that. He was. He was supposed to fight him on the Madrimov card until Ortiz got Rabo again. Did he? I thought Golden Boy just pulled him for whatever. Oh, reason. I thought there were health re- I thought there were health reasons related to why he can't backed out. Or didn't they just reschedule their fight? No, he's fighting uh, Bohachuk in August instead. Hmm. WBC interim title. Uh, <laughs> all right. I mean kind of a step down in quality of opposition but there's a interim title attached to it so i see by making the best of what of his options yeah cl- faster path to a title than tim zoo boha is probably gonna lose fundora is wbc wbo when he beat tim that's right still not sure that was a very clean win but whatever uh all right so that's tom aspinall versus curtis blades and main event Welterweight champion Leon Edwards versus rated second Bilal Muhammad. 
Uh, put the uh, NyQuil or other sleep aids away. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the fight that had to happen, you know, when you play the game of rankings, you should be rewarded for it if you stay at it long enough. And they couldn't not put Bilal up here. But this is probably the last time he'll ever get a title shot. I'm assuming he'll lose because he just seems very one-dimensional to me. But whereas Leon can do, you know, he can beat you on the stand-up, he can submit you, then he just fights at a higher level overall. But I don't know, if there, if there was ever a time for Bilal to show us a new part of his game, it would be this fight. Do it for the motherland, Bilal. My man is Palestinian. So do it for the motherland, dude. I, I feel bad if that's the case. Like, you couldn't have asked for a worse, like, representation <laughs> in your country. <laughs> God damn it, Palestine. You could do better than this. You do a crazy walkout and talk all this shit, and then you lay on your opponent for five rounds. <laughs> so Leon's walking out with, like, an, a Star of David flag <laughs> then, right? <laughs> oh, my God. That would be fucking vicious. <laughs> if, if anything was going to make Bilal stand in trade, it would be that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking rough. Uh, yeah, if, that, if you wanted to get some anger out of him, that's that's how you do it. I don't know, oh, brother. Yeah, I'm not really sure what else uh, is Fabian. Fabian's probably gonna walk out with Leon carrying his title over his head. Probably. Yeah. Uh, if any, like, I'm trying to think. Is there any wrinkle of this fight that we could that would make this exciting and? I guess there is a chance that Leon wants to look impressive here because there is a real chance that Islam moves up and tries to become double champ against him. And so the more exciting he looks, the more sellable that fight is to the UFC. So I don't know, maybe that's the angle for Leon, but I mean, I feel like he'd be very comfortable just to kick box to a decision if he can help it. I uh, honestly, I was trying to think of something to really make this to make this fun i don't know best you could do is like try to make a drinking game out of it i don't know but enough 304 <laughs> hey thanks for listening to this episode of the ultimate fucking casual if you have any questions comments concerns about this episode this podcast whatever the fuck 833-589-7637 I love hearing from people what they think about what we were talking about, or if you have something that you would like to hear us talking about, you know, that's the number to do it. You can call or text. Uh, if you are sufficiently entertaining or informative or both, uh, you can call. It goes straight to voicemail, and I'll cut your audio in. Otherwise, the text will do just fine. 833-LUX-PODS. That's the number for all of Lux Media. So there you go. Uh, we'll be back next week. And there's going to be a little bit of a delay on the following episode, but we'll be back as quickly as we can. So thanks for listening. See you next time.